Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted that you're with us here this morning. And perhaps you're visiting with us. We want to extend a welcome to you. We want to begin with prayer. Uh, we want to continue to pray for our nation that desperately needs God. We want to continue to pray for our president that God would navigate his steps. And we want to pray for our community that God would open up doors of opportunity to share this great message. And we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and its members in particular. Perhaps you have a special request right now. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. We thank you for the Holy Ghost and we thank you for the word of God. Father, we pray for our nation that desperately needs you. God, also, we pray for our president that you will navigate him, his steps in the midst of such confusion that is so alive in our nation today. God, we also pray for our community that you will open up doors of opportunity to share this great message. And Father, I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, my brothers and my sisters, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out strength, protection, and provision. We ask it all in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Praise God. Well, this morning we talked about the fivefold ministry, and I want to extrapolate uh, on that a little bit uh, more this morning. And I want to draw our attention to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And I want us to look at one verse of scripture that is found in verse number 28. You remember that when we talked about the fivefold ministry um, in Ephesians chapter number four, that it identified the fivefold ministry as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's also these offices of the fivefold ministry are being identified here, but there's one in particular that I wanna talk about for several minutes, and it's found in verse number 28. The apostle writing says, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, and he continues on. I want to focus on one aspect here, and it's this word called helps. Everybody said helps. And I want to talk to us for a few moments about finding your place in the local church. Finding your place in the local church. You know, I realized yesterday when talking about the fivefold ministry that it's a huge leap to go from sitting on a pew to maybe being called to be an evangelist or called to be a pastor or called to be an apostle slash missionary but yet it does happen. And it does take the godly environment of a church where you have a pastor, you have a prayer room, you have a pew, you're godly, a godly lifestyle, consecration, dedication. Those are the kind of environments in which the call of God comes forth to call people into that degree of ministry. But long before that call takes place, that isn't the only place that you can be used of God. And that's why I want to talk about the use of this word helps to assist, to assist anywhere and any place that you're needed. One scripture in the word of God says, whatsoever that your hand finds to do, do with all of your heart. You do not have to sit around and wait for God to call you to be an evangelist for you to be used to God. In fact, I think that that is a grave mistake. I think that it's very healthy. And here at Cornerstone, we try to provide a spiritual environment where regardless of how long you've been in the church, everybody has a place and everybody can be used of God. In this particular setting, in verse number 28, 28 the apostle is saying, he first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, and he continues on. 
Notice with me that although there is a distinction and a difference of offices, most notably apostles, prophets, and teachers, it's the exact same anointing. There is no distinction or variableness in that anointing. And I believe what happens is when people come in and they become an integral part of a local church and they find their place as just to help, whether it's cleaning the church, whether it's helping in Sunday school, whether it's helping in our baptismal ministry, wherever the department is, whatever you can find to do. I believe that where you find your place to help, that that becomes the environment where greater doors of infinite influence and usefulness to God and the church are found. In other words, we should be willing to start wherever we can and allow God to open up other doors where he sees fit. I think that's the right way to do it. I remember as a new convert, uh, just being willing to do whatever I could do just so I could hang out around the church, being with God's people, being where that special place where the power of God visited us every week and the word of God went forth. It was a joy and an honor to be used in any capacity that I could be. I did several functions in my local church long before I ever felt the call and felt the validation from my pastor that I was going to be an evangelist. And I think that's healthy. Praise God. I think that God has opportunities for everybody that's faithful in the body of Christ, regardless what it is. It might just be, like I've already mentioned, to clean the church. It might just be to work in the Sunday school department. It might just be to just stand with somebody praying in the altar and just carefully lay your hand on their shoulder, brother to brother and sister to sister. You're helping in that spiritual mechanism called the work of God. What a great joy it is. Find your place. Let God bless you. There's nothing like it. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.